we just drove down and we stopped in a place that had the old Montana prison complex. We went to the old jail place. Now, I am one that is fascinated by prisons and especially the old ones and the stories that come mm -hmm. out of it. So, you know, these things do fascinate me. It was a different experience for me this for this one. I've seen small jails and things like that, but this one was quite a huge complex. Yeah. So there was a, an interesting um, emotional like feeling that you got when you entered into this place and there was it almost felt heavy and you felt this almost depressing mood that went with it yeah. and I, I can't explain why but it just kind of came with the remains of what was left there yeah so you end up taking a self-guided tour in this place so they gave us a booklet and i think it explained the stops along the way there was like numbered stops but i had the same reaction i mean you felt the heaviness and the weight and you could almost feel that presence of the people who had made their way decades earlier and who lived in the conditions of this place and talk about a mood shifter i mean i it just quickly hit yeah. me and it was it was depressing. That said, I think it's still intriguing to go and see a place like this. Yes. But just know that if if this is on your itinerary, this is not a place that you're going to walk through and walk out of whistling a happy song. That ain't going to happen. So, And you actually do get a chance to walk through the prison area and the cells and some of the other administrative buildings and that were still there. And you walk in to their mess hall, their cells with the bars still there. And I remember walking around this building because we had first walked in and we got to the, the remaining building and there was administrative type of offices that you went in and you checked that out. And there's peeled paint coming off, parts of ceiling that feel like they're coming off. It's just not super well maintained. There's water damage. There's all these things happening. I think they're trying to maintain it as best they can. And it described some of the people that work there and the things that they did. There was the place where people would come and visit their relatives. So you just got this sense of oppression, basically. Mm -hmm. And and then you started reading the stories in, in the building of the very famous riot that happened there in which people did die. Mm -hmm. And it's an eerie feeling. There was some graphic pictures, you know, where you're just like, oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. So be ready for that kind of stuff yeah. because the reality of that type of life is the attachment of there is violence in it too. Mm -hmm. So it was just, I mean, the whole time I'm just sitting there reading all this and thinking, wow, this is, wasn't a great place to be. As we left that administrative part of the building and we were going around the back, there were isolation cells, which were just freaky. They were just, they were just... Kind of like, Very dilapidated, yeah. falling apart. And you know that people that spent time there were in absolute misery. It's kind of a mental torture, probably, oh, it was, huh? It just seemed horrifying. Yeah. yeah, and among the things that caught my eye, there was along one of the walls when we got to the part of the prison that had cell after cell after cell after cell yeah the, yeah. the, the main population yeah was there. there was a description of this would have been what in the early 1900s there was a sedition act that was passed in the state of montana this was shocking yeah, yeah. and there was there was on this one wall photo after photo after photo with the stories of the people who were incarcerated for it could be two years three years up to five years for just saying something anti-government, anti-country. Sedition is crime and one of Montana's harshest penalties, meaning as follows, incitement of discontent or rebellion against the government 
any action, especially in speech or writing, promoting such discontent or rebellion. Archaic rebellious disorder, number three. Yeah, I'm reading a lot of these things that look like landed people in this prison, and there's a lot of this stuff that I see people put, up, put on Facebook and Twitter every single day. And if you did that in 1915, 18, whatever, it would have landed you here. To know that about a hundred years ago, if you said some of these same things, or if somebody said that you said those things, because right. because some people got put into prison and were found guilty of the Sedition Act because somebody said that they overheard them at a restaurant or at a bar right. saying something negative about the government or negative about their country, and um, to know that you could have been put in prison for a number of years, I mean that was, and some of them got. 10, 15 years? Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. It was like, it was shocking. Yeah. Here's a good one. You see this kind of stuff every day. I would sooner fight for the Kaiser than I would for the United States. F the U.S. and F the flag. I mean it. This guy here said that Americans are no good and I hope Germany will win. And for uttering that in 1918, he got... 1.5 to 3 years in Montana State Prison and on and on and on this goes. This is just people who uh, said not the kindest things about the government. 10 to 20 years for saying this is the thing anyway. Nothing but a piece of cotton with a little paint on it and some other marks in all the corner there. I will not kiss that thing it might be covered with microbes. And he got 10 to 20 years. Words that got you in prison. Not that a lot of this stuff is nice or right, but it shouldn't land you with losing your um, freedom and liberty, right? Yeah, and a lot of them, if you look at some of them, two to four years, one to two years, there's one over here that's one to 12 years. Now this guy, this Twitter-like statement, he got two to four years for uttering those words. That's wild. So we left that area and there was some outside area. They actually had a gym area that no longer exists, but you know, they were talking about the gym area. They had a theater on the property which we did not get a chance to go into. Um, it was closed off, but you, the theater is still there. Mm -hmm. And they had baseball fields. There was a chapel there for uh, those that decided to repent and make their life better, I guess, or just need spiritual guidance. Mm -hmm. So it had those elements of it too, but it was not something that was there from its beginnings. I think over time, there was a sense of trying to treat these people more humanely. So they added those elements to it to give them something to look forward to while they had to serve their time. Mm -hmm. But I did walk away from that just feeling kind of odd. So this prison was established in 1871 and it was an active prison until 1979. So it had a you know, quite a long span of time you can go see its remains today and when you're done with that just walk across the hallway and you'll end up at the montana auto museum i would do them in that order too you know so go to the prison first and then end with the auto museum yes, because it'll absolutely. you'll end up feeling better you'll leave on a, on a little higher note If you like cars, there, gosh, there were so many. It was like room it's after room, unbelievable. cars through the decades. I mean, lots of historic cars. One of the things that was neat in the museum is they had the rooms sectioned off kind of by decade or mm -hmm. by era. And as we would walk through, it was the cars of the 1920s. The music that was being piped in was from that era. Once you got to the 1940s, you'd hear swing music probably like glenn miller and that type of music when you got to the 50s you'd start to get the rock and roll mm -hmm. so they tried to create some kind of ambiance via music which was neat and there were some interesting photographs and descriptions of some of the earliest auto camping culture that had ever happened and as you've 
probably guessed as you listen to our podcast, we're avid campers. We love camping. We love being in the outdoors. And it's kind of neat to see how people did that when cars were brand mm-hmm. new, before there were motorhomes and RVs. And you kind of saw how those types of things started to come to life. This was $295. 950 pounds for the cozy camp. A home behind your car saves you dollars every night. So a neat place for car aficionados. In the auto museum, I don't think you're gonna need to spend as much time in as some other places. I think an hour, you can probably get through it yeah, fairly well. Yeah, yeah, no more than an hour, and it's, it's pretty well laid out, so you just kinda swing your way through each section and, and you're back out at the gift shop. Yeah. Which is the middle part between the prison and the auto. Yep. And so, again, between the, the prison and the auto museum, probably spent maybe close to two hours and then it was time to step outside and grab a bite. Yeah, as I always love to do, there was a little ice cream shop. Very tiny little building that was right down the street from the auto museum and it was called the old prison cow ice cream and i had the huckleberry ice cream huckleberry fudge not just plain old huckleberry we had to get in our huckleberry because there ain't no huckleberry in ventura county california for as tiny as it was it seemed crowded there was tables in the front the building that they were in, it was uh, one of the original gas stations in the area that they converted to an ice cream shop. I think for somebody who likes museums, between Grant Corps Historic Ranch up the road, the Montana Prison, the Auto Museum, and some of these other places that are across the street, you can easily spend an entire day, if not more. It's a neat place to go, Deer Lodge. I had never heard of that location, but I'm very glad that we made room in our itinerary to spend at least a day and uh, saw some things that were brand new and very interesting. Yes, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was really a nice day. It was a fantastic day. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you've seen some things that will help you plan your future travel adventures. And if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and like us. And if you have any comments, we'd love to hear from you. And until next time, keep on traveling. And we hope to see you at the places places where where we we go. go.